If you're looking to learn Blender and attract more clients to your 3D services, this course might be just for you. Many people think that learning in Blender is very difficult and that learning it requires years of hard work. And this might be true if you try to learn on your own, hardly watching thousands of tutorials and spending a lot of time and effort to go through them all, and in the end realize that you learned nothing. But in this course you will not only learn how to easily create eye-catching VFX animations, but also gain knowledge that will help you create animations of any kind and taste without spending days on it. Because in just one hour we will cover all stages of animation creation and create this animation for your portfolio, which will help you attract more clients to your freebie services. And did you know how much even a beginner VFX artist charges for his work? So don't waste your time and energy and click on this course to gain valuable skills that will help you attract more clients and increase your value as a free designer. Okay, let's start. And to start creating VFX, we need to download uh, two more applications in addition to Blender, namely FSpy and FSpy add-on for Blender. I will leave all the files in the description. But if you are creating VFX for the first time, you may have problems or questions with the installation. So I will show you how to do it correctly. First, let's download FSpy itself. And to do this, we'll just need to run the installation file and download it like a regular app. With the FSpy Blender add-on, things are a little more complicated. So to do this, let's open Blender and create a new project. Then click on Edit, Preferences, and make sure that you click on the add-on. And then we need to click on the Install. And select the SPI Blender add-on file. And now, uh, once we have selected our file, we need to enter FSPI into search bar. And then check the box next to the FSPI add-on. And then we can close the setting window and we can also close the blender for now. So after we have installed all necessary programs, let's find out how AppSpy works. So open it. And here we need to select the image of our VFX reference. I will leave all the files in the description below of this course. So just select the image and move it to the AppSpy. And as you can see, this image is dim, so to fix this, let's deselect the dim image. And to understand how a spy works and why we need it, let's imagine that this image is a 3D rendering, or a scene inside a blender. And what we need to do is to show where the X and Y axis will be in this image. And we can do it with these green and red lines. The green line is the Y axis, and the red line is X axis. So let's take the green line and let's say the side of the screen will be the Y axis. So align the green line with the screen and uh, we need to do the same thing at the bottom of the screen with the second green line. The x-axis will go in this direction, so let's move this red line here. And we need to find something in the image that goes straight in this direction. In this case, the shadow will be OK. Second red line, let's put somewhere here. This point also serves us as a 3D cursor in Blender. So Let's move it somewhere here. And if we selected the X, Y grid floor in the 3D guide, we can see that it is perfectly aligned with the screen. And now we can save it by clicking on File and Save As and name our SPI project. And now it's time to open the Blender and create a new project.
and we can delete it all because we don't need that in the future. Okay, now let's add our newly created fspy file. So click file, import, and now we will have the fspy option due to the installed add-on. So click on it and select uh, the recently created fspy file. And as you can see, the image uh, has become dull again. And to fix this, we need to go to the data, then click on the background images and increase the opacity to one. And now we have a shiny colorful footage. Okay, now let's create a room or environment for the VFX scene and recreate this screen. So press Shift plus A and create a plane. Rotate it on 90 degrees on the Y axis and move it to the screen. And we need to make sure that this plane fits the screen perfectly so that there are no problems in the future with the screen. Okay, now let's go to the edit mode, select this edge and move it on the Z axis. And if necessary, we can also move the vertices a little so that they coincide with the reference. And now let's select this edge and move it on the Y axis. Then extrude it along the X axis by pressing E and move this part along the Y until we line up with the screen. Okay, and next we need to select this edge and press Ctrl plus B and bevel it. And we can increase the number of cuts by rotating nicely. And once we happy with the result, we can right click and shade it smooth. Now let's create a holdout part that will help us hide all unnecessary stuff. So select all these vertices at the top and extrude them along the Z axis. And we need to do the same thing with the bottom vertices. Okay, once it's ready, now we can create an actual room inside the screen. For that, we need to select this edge and extrude it on the X axis. And if we click here in this menu and select vertices, we can snap this edge to any selected vertex. All we need to do is to move the edge on the X axis and while holding control, select the vertex we want to snap to. And after we're done, simply connect these edges by pressing F. And also we can connect this button and tab vertices. First selecting them and also pressing F. And now we need to separate the screen from the room because in the future we will animate the screen separately. So let's select these faces, then press P and selection. And we can hide the screen for now. And this is what it looks like from the inside of the screen. But there's a shading issue and to fix it, just right click and select Shade Auto Smooth. Okay, now let's rename our objects to keep everything clean and save time in the future and we need to find the objects. And also, if you want, you can modernize the room and use your imagination. For example, we can extrude the bottom and top to create the illusion of an endless bottom or top. And uh, once you're happy with the result, 
Let's create some magic and add some cold out material. But before that, we need to go to the render viewport and change the render engine to cycles and the device to GPU compute. Now let's apply material to these places to hide them. Also, let me increase the strength of the light so you can see it more clearly. So let's add a room, go to the materials menu and add two material slots by clicking on this plus. And for each slot, we need to create a material. First one will be the room material and the second holdout material. For holdout material, click on the surface and select hold out. And as you can see, nothing has changed. This is because we need to apply a second material to these faces. Select the faces we want to apply it to and uh, click assign. And we need to do the same with the bottom part. And here we go. I will probably return the top of the room because I like it more. You however can trust your heart and leave that if you want. We can also create a collection and place all the objects there for more convenience in the future. To create a collection, press M. And here we go. In this lesson we learned what is the FSPY and how to deal with it. And even created the environment for our VFX scene. It will be the foundation in our VFX animation. And in the next lesson, we will learn how to create 3D models from reference and we'll create packaging for our product and a lot of different 3D models that will serve us to boost the appearance of the product. And see you in the next lesson.